Hello and welcome to The Book by Book, a podcast about the odd book or two we've been reading. I'm your host Scott, but I'm not alone. Toby's here with me, and this episode we're talking about Jeff Vandermeer's Venus Underground. This is actually going to be a pretty spoiler-free episode, so if you're okay about not knowing how it ends in this podcast, we'll continue on. <laughs> Destroy their books. Don't right. bother reading and watch these. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go first with one of mine, and that is Venus Underground by Jeff Vandermeer. Right. I don't know nothing about this book. I've never heard about it. You this might is... know him recently because he had some fame with his Area X books, became adapted into a film by Alex Garland under the name of Annihilation. Oh, okay. He wrote the, the trilogy, and only the first one was made into a standalone film. We could talk about oh, that after. I, I have read that. It's pretty good. The, the first this book... This is the Annihilation book? Yes. Yeah, the, okay. the first book was stunning. The second book, less so. The third book, less more. And I think the film did a pretty good uh, adaptation of making it its own thing. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting. I, I heard that Alex Garland just read the book and then adapted it from that memory like the next week without referring back and yeah. taking in, in what he liked. Yeah, so that's that author. This is actually his first book uh, or his first major publication book. I think he wrote a lot of short stories and one book previously. Um, okay. But this is the furthest back I've read and it's, um, I guess, it's his it's first big publication book. I think since his fame, his and it's pretty common. Uh, his his previous works have now been published. Been published, yeah. Right. I think that's pretty common, right? Um, am I right mm-hmm. in thinking that although Carrie is famously Stephen King's first book, he actually wrote it after Salem's Lot. It's just Salem's Lot was picked up because of the success of Carrie. And we go. That, I don't know the truth to that one. Okay. Well, I might be wrong, but I, I think that's that. That has happened to a lot of writers whose backlog gets picked up after Mm -hmm. success so venus underground is it's a fantasy like urban fantasy mixed with body horror it's okay uh, urban fantasy mixed with body horror yeah bear with me this one because it's uh a lot of it feels written on on feel and visuals and actually you know it's got the characters but they're the least developed than the city and the visuals so we have three chapters and the first one is the shortest, the second one slightly longer and the third one takes up a third of the book. Right. Uh, first one we're introduced into Nicholas who is yeah. living on top of the city. So the city is Venus. He is, is it, oh, it's nothing to do with the planet. It's just a city called Venus. Yes. I'm not sure. It doesn't feel like sci-fi. It does feel like Earth, but it feels like a dystopian dying Earth far into the future and almost slightly another dimension. So he is a hologram artist and we get a lot of vivid snippets of like organic art and organic life forms. It's like AI has become a thing, but Mm -hmm. it's also become cheap. And it's kind of overrun the city. I sort of thought of it as like, you know, imagine a city plagued by rats and you have to get yeah. them, but they're there. That's kind of how AI feels in, in this book. It's, it's okay, not nice. Not really like, like, a, like a plague. Yeah, it's, it's not really used to anyone's advantage, at least with our characters. It's just uh, almost like some mad scientists let their prep projects run wild and they've just multiplied yeah. them. So Nicholas is on the edge and he is an artist, but I think he calls himself like a a living artist so that there's a lot of mixing inorganic and organic and holograms. And he makes a deal with an underground kingpin called Quinn. And that's his chapter. It's kind of an introduction on him. It's it's pretty short. Mm -hmm. And then we jump to his twin sister, Nicola, who is... Uh, kind of looking for him, but more concerned that he's not really been around. And so one day she comes home and there is like a, a meerkat, like a talking meerkat in her apartment. She kind of doesn't think she can trust it, but it's talking about her brother on the underground. 
and then it flat out just tries to attack her. Like a fight ensues and she does defeat it. But at the last minute when she's kind of beaten, when she opens her front door to escape, her brother is there who chokes her out. And we fade that chapter to an end. Oh, and they both feel like an intro. It's quite strangely done. Yeah. Um, we so get that's chapter one and chapter two. Yes. They're, they're both pretty short. Chapter one is written in first person. Chapter yeah. two, second person. And the next chapter, third person. Okay. I'm not a big fan of that. It throws me. That's interesting. Yeah, especially second person. When, when the mm. book starts saying you, I, I haven't read many. Maybe some books have a segment. And including this, like I said, it's a short chapter. But it, it doesn't help to get the book running. So how how is it written in second person? What's give me an example of second person reading? Uh, uh, you, you open the door and you see a meerkat. You are okay. tired. You are. Is that not first? Well, I suppose that is me. Somebody telling me. So yeah. Yeah. So it's almost saying that you're the character. Yeah, and I I don't know why other than the novelty of having the one two three first and first mm. second second third third and third. That's uh, interesting doesn't feel like it adds to anything particularly. We don't really get to know this character. And mm -hmm. she, she, although she comes back into it, we never come into her head. But so part three is uh, Shad Shadrach, I think you pronounce, which is not a long lost lover, but a, like a boyfriend from the past who goes looking for her and he finds the meerkat and having some engineering, he, he, um, he kind of adapts it and sticks its, he its head on a plate and renames it John the Baptist and kind of finds out why the Mick had attacked her in the first place. He basically sets off on an odyssey into the underground to retrieve her. Right. I don't want to go too far with spoilers because it, it is a very short book and it does read fast. It, it's actually quite okay. good action. But I, I can talk about the, the style and stuff. It does feel like he is very meshing like technology and AI with like Hieronymus Bosch or um, what's the Dante's Inferno because we go deeper and deeper into the city. You know, the AI yeah. becomes more obscure. Um, mm -hmm. we, get, we get quite grotesque half man, half machine imagery and characters. Because the book's short, it does kind of feel like a list of characters. Like he'll yeah. find someone, they'll either help him or he'll have to defeat them. And then we move on to the next one. Uh, and yeah. longer book would have kind of come back round to them or had more payoff. It's just a sort of series of events with characters. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I could tell you what's happened to the sister without a spoiler, because he does actually find her quite early on. And she's just about alive. And he has to save her. And also the, the crime lord Quinn, who, yeah. um, and I think this is why it kind of feels very uh, Hieronymus Bosch and, and Dante's Inferno-ish, not just because of the visuals, but he really plays out like a literal devil, you know, like yeah. he deals with the devil, he sort of talks um, in that generalization and, and battles for, for the good and for the whole. It's not that I didn't like this book, it's just... <sighs> It's, it's just hard to come out and knowing what you read. And maybe that was his intention because we get simultaneously really, really vivid imagery, but yeah. it's actually quite sparse description, which can, yeah. I guess, throw you into confusion more because sometimes you're happy with what you've come up with, but then you realize, oh, I don't know if I've made that up. You know, like when mm -hmm. you're hearing a kind of half cyborg, half literal meerkat, is it important if you're picturing the same thing as the author? That thing of the, you know, when you get interviews of authors and they, they don't want to clarify things because they say, no, it's yeah. more important it's in the reader's head. Yeah, it's interpretation. But at what line does that become important that, no, you, this shouldn't be interpretation? Tell yeah. me what it is. Yeah, be descriptive. There's descriptive words for a reason. Yeah, I mean... It, it was a quick read and 
it's it's almost a mini epic. It it feels like yeah. it should be a five hundred pages bigger. And I okay. think because of the the way it spins out and the way it's described and, and it is very nightmarish, I guess it's a good thing it's not that long because it's yeah. kind of hard to breathe when you're in there. Um, okay. So would you say it was gripping? To a point, yes. And I guess because like if the action's ramping up but you've only got 10 pages to go, how invested are you in the action and the outcome? You know, at what point mm -hmm. is the action irrelevant to the outcome and what's more important? So when we're we're not really learning much more about the characters that this isn't great for character development i'll say it's more about the world they inhabit and it does yeah. do a picture of that and having read his later stuff I, I do think he he's definitely something he's interested in mm -hmm. mixing sort of inorganic and organic and and bio experimenting and splicing is something he'll come back to time and time again right okay mm. but you know, there there is there is stuff to enjoy about this. There's certain um you, you get the sense, and I don't think it's explicit, but that the world is dying. And I guess something I really liked the idea of was that the underworld is gonna survive longer than the top world, even though it's more horrible. It kind of made yeah. me feel like when people talk about, you know, nuclear bombs, they talk about cockroaches and rats surviving. And yeah. I guess maybe because the deeper he goes, the more rotten, in some sense, is literal, and, and mm -hmm. more things become rotten, but they will survive longer. But they are kind of cannibalistic, and it kind of reminds me of just like if you've ever had to go through your trash, that's that's it's a full bag, but yeah, living on top, it's not that fresh, but it's fresher. But the deeper you go, the worse it gets, the more, it gets, the more wet it gets. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Now. That was kind of nice about it. I guess it just goes so fast, and I don't yeah. know if it's intentional. So yeah, it's definitely worth a read. I I kind of simultaneously enjoyed and didn't enjoy it. I guess I just needed more from the characters because mm -hmm. it just becomes he just becomes solely based on the mission, and I guess it's that. Uh, one of those problems where the villains are more interesting than the leads. Yeah. Which is common, right? Um, I've been watching a lot of uh, the Marvel movies recently. Yeah. Um, we're trying to sort of watch through all the phases. And so I've just read a few articles and there's a lot on like, you know, Marvel has the heroes, but DC has the villains. Then yeah. DC has the more interesting villains, you know, hence exactly. the joke that will be made as many times as, as Batman or made an appearance. Mm. So yeah, overall, Jeff Vandem is um, one of his early works, Venus Underground. Yeah. I, I would read another one, but I've already bought them. I, um, I, I did sort of eat up those Area X ones, even though two and three became less enjoyable. Um, yeah. There's something about him that just pulls me in. Not, not in any writing style. Does he remind me of Franz Kafka? But yeah. I don't really enjoy reading Franz Kafka, but there's something about it that puts me at unease that no other writer, no horror can do. Um, okay. The, the castle and the trial. I mean, he's only got three, really. three novels, so it's <laughs> not that many. Yeah. But yeah. even though I don't particularly like, I guess the, the plot, there's something so unnerving, you know, yeah. in that he, he's caught up in a system that's bigger than him, but also no one understands, but the, the wheels have to keep running. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so it's a similar, like his, his, this is the fifth one of his read, I've read, I've read oh, his, well. short, his short stories, uh, City of Saints and Mad Men. Mm -hmm. This, this is not set in the world of Amberges, but he has, I think, three, two novels and one book of short stories all set in a, in, in one fantastical land. Um, oh, wicked. That's really cool. And again... I think less, less tech, but similar themes of like there are there are mushroom. There's like a fungus eating the whole city, but there are characters and people. So I I do have two more of his, and I will read them. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I mean, actually, I I haven't liked over half I've read, but I do like how he writes, and so I do like the way he paints. So yeah. I will give the ones I go 
with the ones I have a go. If I don't enjoy them, I'll probably stop. It does go really quick. Yeah. Um, I just wish you had more that you can that you can root for. Mm-hmm. You want um, Shadrach to, to sort of to win out, but yeah. you're not that bothered. You don't really know him. It it sort of starts in the action and stays in the action, almost like a sort yeah. of fantastical detective. But you know, those hard hard boiled detective novels. Yeah. The detective is just hard boiled and maybe he's got a dead wife, but that's all you're getting. <laughs> um, I like the cover on the book. The book cover is really good. Oh yeah, this is. I think this is a reissue. This is. This has come yeah. since his Area X fame. He, the, I think the whole most of his works have had a refit with a, a similar cover. Right. Um, yeah, it's yeah, really good though. Some, some nice yeah. artistry on that one. It's pretty striking. Um, I guess it represents what happens in the book, but it seems more hopeful. The book. Has, yeah. Uh, Quite a downer feel. I don't know if you're a fan of the Blade Runner, mm-hmm. which I'd love to cover one day because I'm a huge fan of that book. But very similarly, this is a dying Earth, and it knows it's dying. It's like yeah. leaking out. I think that's part of why the AI has run rampant. It's kind of a way to live on after the yeah. life forms live off. All the life forms are adapting to live in this new world, and it's not happy. It's it's grim and grotesque. Yeah. Wow. No, it sounds good though. You you've sold it to me. I put it that way. Oh, okay. Because because that was the one that because we said we'd pick a book you liked and one you didn't particularly like. That was actually yeah. my not particularly like book. Hey, we're going to wrap it up around here. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. Join us again next episode. And until then, support your local bookstores and have a great day.